Ben Santer, let's begin with you and tell us what contributions did Steven Schneider make to climate science? What lasting contributions did he make? Steve was in at the beginning of climate science. Um, he got in on the ground floor in terms of trying to understand human impacts on climate. He made uh, fundamental contributions to our understanding of how clouds affect climate. Uh, fundamental contributions to our understanding of how aerosol particles um, affect climate and was one of the early voices in the whole debate about the environmental consequences of, of nuclear war and how the smoke um, mm -hmm. from fires generated by nuclear exchanges might uh, affect Earth's climate for years to come. Uh, he was also one of the pioneers in terms of understanding the effects of the ocean on climate, how the ocean um, acts to, to delay uh, the, uh, the climate change that we've committed ourselves to, the huge thermal inertia of the ocean. Uh, he published some of the first papers uh, looking at the role of the ocean in climate change. Um, I first intersected with Steve because uh, he also made contributions in an area that's of particular interest to me, trying to understand um, the statistical aspects of climate change so we know as climate scientists that there are natural fluctuations on climate, that Earth's climate does fluctuate uh, without any human intervention at all. There are changes in the sun's energy output, changes in the amount of volcanic dust in the atmosphere, natural uh, modes of oscillation like El Niños and La Niñas, which we know here in California. And Steve looked at the problem way back in the 1970s and early 80s um, against this background of climate noise, when and where might we expect to see the signal of human intervention on climate? Um, with his wife, Terry, Steve also made uh, pioneering contributions in our understanding, not only of the effects of climate change on the physical climate system, but also the impacts of those physical climate changes in temperature, rainfall, atmospheric circulation on living things, on the distribution and abundance of, of uh, plant and animal species. Uh, in the later stages of his career, he got uh, heavily engaged in the economic implications of climate mm -hmm. change. Uh, how do we identify levels of dangerous anthropogenic interference, um, tipping points in the climate system? What would it cost to put in place climate policies that would avoid reaching those tipping points? Um, so he made fundamental contributions uh, to climate change science, to looking at the impacts of climate change, and more importantly, I think, uh, to the communication of climate uh, science to policymakers and to the general public. Let's talk about the communication. Uh, he, some people think he had a unique ability to make complex science accessible to a, a mainstream uh, public. What lessons have we learned from the way he, he did his business and the way he talked about science uh, in a way that, that you know, the average people can understand? Ben Sander? Well, I think that uh, it's unique to combine the things that Steve had, both uh, cutting edge uh, scientific expertise uh, and the ability to translate that. Uh, complex science into bite-sized, readily understandable terms. That's a gift, and Steve had that gift. Uh, he also had the ability to connect with anyone, not just with other professors or um, uh, people who were experts on climate change, but with members of the general public, with um, policymakers, with the media, and he had the ability to convey his passion for what he did, um, that science was exciting, <laughs> that the joy at understanding things is what drives us, what impels us. Uh, he was unique, too, at finding stories, the metaphor, um, the cloudy crystal ball, for example. Uh, you know, when climate scientists like Noah try and uh, understand the climatic shape of things to come over the next century, there's a lot of uncertainty in those forecasts, but there are a lot of things that we know. So how do we reduce the cloudiness in that, in that crystal ball? How do we peer more reliably into the future? He was a master at that sort of communication. The, the loaded die was, was another <laughs> metaphor for mm -hmm. the future that uh, by 
burning fossil fuels and changing the chemical composition of the atmosphere, we're loading the die. <laughs> uh, and even now with things like Climate Gate, where there were publicly expressed uh, concerns about uh, emails, we heard some of that in the video, or Glacier Gate and uh, one or two errors in the IPCC fourth assessment report of you know, several thousand pages in, in length. Steve found, curiously enough, a baseball metaphor <laughs> Uh, to, to explain that and, and said, listen, you wouldn't expect a player to have a batting average of 1,000 the whole, sure. the whole season. Right. Um, they strike out. And in this vast IPCC fourth assessment report, there are errors. But we've identified them and we correct them. And the, the bulk of the science, the vast majority of the scientific information in these reports is the best available information we have. So it was that ability to explain things, to find pictures, stories, images, metaphors that was so unique about Steve.